Hello everyone, it's Wilson here. Today, let's talk about using a triple integral to find the volume of the solid enclosed by the two paraboloids. The first thing that we should do is to graph each of those paraboloids. The first one is z equals x squared plus y squared. And so as you can see, that it's going to open up because z is non-negative. Okay, so that's our first one. And then now the second one, the second one is z equals 8 minus x squared minus y squared. You can see that both the x squared and the y squared have have a negative sign in front of them. And so that means it's going to open down. And the, the 8 here actually gives us the vertex. And it's at 0, 0, 8. So our vertex is right here. This is 8. And then it opens down. And so that's the other problem. Okay. Now see what's going on here is that they do intersect in, in here. And we actually need to figure out the intersection first before we actually continue solving the problem because that will give us the projection. How do we get this intersection? The intersection is <clears throat> the um, the intersection between those two surfaces. So that means we can set them equal to each other, especially when the z is already isolated. That makes the calculation really easy. So we have x squared plus y squared is equal to now this. Okay, and so now we can uh, move the x squared and the y squared to the other side. So we get 2x squared plus 2y squared is equal to 8. And so now we can divide both sides by 2. So we get x squared plus y squared is equal to 4. And you can see that now that's a circle equation. And where is that circle located at? If you just compare this equation with that equation, you can actually see that the z value is equal to 4. So now you can see that um, the circle has radius 2, and it's located at z equals 4. <clears throat> okay, so now we are ready. We can actually graph the projection onto the xy plane. Okay, so this is the projection on the xy plane. And it's actually based on this circle that we found. And it actually, in this case, is a disk that we are getting because it's a region. So as you can see that the radius is two. And so we are actually ready to start setting up the integral. Now we getting setting up this integral, we need to think about which corner system that we gotta use. Should we just use rectangular or should we use cylindrical or spherical? We usually can look at the projection region and since this projection region is a circular disk, we should use the cylindrical coordinates to set up our triple integral. Okay, now how do we do it? Well, first we need another formula to find the volume of the solid. We actually need to set up the triple integral. Let's call the solid, um, the solid here, which is, which looks like that. Okay, this is a solid that we are getting. We call this E. And you can see that the, um, the intersection is in the middle. And so now, <clears throat> If we want to find the solid, our integrand would be 1 and with the dv here. And so now we can fill in the details, and write it as an iterated integral. Okay, so the 1 is still just the 1, and we don't actually need to put it there. We can put down uh, dz, okay. And then because we use cylindrical, so that means the, the rest of the stuff would be r, dr, d data. And you can see that that's the dA. Okay, so now we are actually ready to write down the limits. Now you can see that for this innermost integral, which would be the limits for the z, it's actually based on the bottom surface and the upper surface. And the bottom surface is actually what? The bottom surface is actually coming from our Probably the first probably, which is z equals x squared plus y squared. And then the upper surface is actually coming from what? z equals 8 minus x squared minus y squared. That's coming from here. Okay, so now we can actually put those in here. And how do we put them? We actually cannot just put x squared plus y squared as the lower limit because now we do not have x and y anymore. 
we have R and data. And so how do we convert it to polar? We have X squared plus Y squared. And what is that? That gives us what R squared. So we, we can get R squared over here. And actually, I should not use that color. So we can get, uh, what is that R squared? Okay. What about the upper limit? The upper limit is this one, which is um, eight minus, and now we get a minus r square because of the minus x square minus r, y square, which will give us the negative r square. Okay, now the rest is actually quite simple. Once we finish with the innermost integral, then we only need to worry about the projection region. Now, since this is a full circle of this, the r, it's actually based on the radius that we get here. As you can see that the, this is centered at the origin. So now r is going from 0 to 2. So we go from 0 to 2 for the r. And what about the data? The data for this, so 0 to 2 pi. Okay, so now we have the integral set up and then the rest, it's simply just doing the integration. So now let's do the integration really quickly. And so we have what? Integrate with respect to z, so we are going to get z going from r square, and then 8 minus r square, and then r stays there and the r the data. And then now and then now going from there, we are going to get what? A minus R square, okay? Plug into the Z. And then now the, the other one is the R square, so minus R square, okay? And then, um, so that's that's for that. And then the R, D, R, and D data, we didn't touch those, so we still gotta keep them. And then now keep going. So zero to two pi. And then what do we get here? We get A minus two R square. And for some reason, I'm actually missing the integral. So I should go back and put that back in, right? So we have a minus r square minus r square, and then times r d r d theta. And I'm just going to distribute now. I think that will be faster. So 8 times r, we get 8r. Okay, this is 2r squared times r, 2r cubed. And DRD data. <clears throat> and then now going from there, we start integrating with respect to R. You can see that there is no data involved in here. You can integrate data at the same time. So we can actually write integral as 0 to 2 pi, and then D data. And then that one, we can integrate. So integrate this one, we are going to get what? R squared, and then divide by 2. 8 divided by 2 is 4. And then minus this one, r to the fourth and so multiply by one fourth times a two so one half and then going from zero to two and see that we can integrate this one at the same time now so we are going to get uh, data evaluated from zero to two pi and continue to plugging in the um, the two and the zero in there so we are going to get four times a blank one half and then a blank to the fourth power Okay, and then so we can plug in the two in there. What about the zero? When you're plugging the zero, it becomes zero. So uh, I'm not gonna put it now. So I'm just gonna just keep that. And what do we get here? Plug in the two pi, we get two pi. Plug in the zero, we get zero. So we just get the two pi. And this one, do the calculation. So we're gonna get two square, four, four times four, 16 minus this one, 16 divided by two is eight. So we get eight times two, we get what? 16 pi. And so we are finished. Okay, so that's the volume of the solid. And as you can see that the main focus is actually on setting up the integral. And in this case, we decided to use the cylindrical coordinates because we have our projection region as a, a circular disk center at the origin. Okay, so I will do more triple integral examples next time. Thank you for watching.